So let's do a demo now and we'll look at what the palm.xml file will look like when we add a dependency. I'll show you a, a dependency not used in our Hello World application to show you how the reference to transit dependencies is pulled in. And we'll also use scopes to show you how things don't get packaged or do get packaged in our final artifact. So for this demo we're going to go through and add a couple of dependencies to show you some of the concepts we've learned in this module so far. I've, I've opened up my Hello World Palm, just it's kind of the same example we've used in the last couple of modules, and uh, right now it's, it's pretty empty. I'm going to go ahead and add the dependencies section, and make sure you use dependencies and not dependency management, that's a, an advanced concept. And inside there I'm going to add a dependency. Now you remember we need our three things for our dependency. We need our group ID. And for this example, I've got some code written. You can see the, uh, the red X over here that my Hello World class isn't compiling. Uh, and I need the commons lang dependency, uh, it's group ID. And the artifact ID is also commons lang. Make sure I spell commons right. And then uh, for our version, I know because I've looked at their website that uh, the current version for this is 2.1. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And uh, my IDE will actually automatically pick up these changes and build it. You'll notice that my red X went away on my Hello World class right here because those resources were now available. This was pretty simple and not a very uh, it's not a bad example, but not very in-depth as far as the advanced concepts that we've learned. Let's go ahead and add a dependency for testing with a scope associated with it. So I'm going to come out here and add another dependency. And again, I need my three things. I need my group ID, which is JUnit. And my artifact ID, which is also JUnit. Um, these were some of the very first uh, dependencies that were put into Maven and in, in the Maven repositories and they have a tendency to not follow the naming convention that the group ID should be the same as the package structure or the organization that owns it. So let's uh, let's look at here for the version. Now I've looked on their website beforehand and know that 4.10 was one of the more recent versions that are available. And right now this is saying that this resource is available to, to anything inside my application. The, the catch here is that we're going to add a scope and say that this is only available for the test phase. So now JUnit will only be allowed to execute as part of the test phase and won't be bundled as part of our application when we, when we package this up. Okay, so we've seen how, how the, phase, the scoping works there. Nothing too, too exciting there. Let's do something with some transitive dependencies now. So I'm going to add, and if you look over here uh, inside my IDE, uh, which the next module we're actually going to cover all of this, you can look at my dependencies and you can see I've got commons lang and JUnit, uh, and it's showing me the scope of test here, but no other dependencies resolved, nothing nothing too neat here. Oh, we do have a transitive dependency for JUnit, the Hamcrest, I, I forgot about that. But let's add Hibernate Core in here. So I'm going to add another dependency and add a group ID. Remember we need our three things and our group ID for this actually follows the naming convention of org.hibernate. The artifact is hibernate-core and then our version and this is one of those that they kind of made up their own naming convention for the version 4.1.6.final and it is proper case instead of all caps or anything else but uh, as you remember from from our versions uh, section that that doesn't really mean anything unless it's snapshot I can have final however I want to spell it for my product. Hibernate chose to name theirs this way, so I had to follow the convention that they used, but it's not meaning anything special to my application. So now I've got uh, 
Hibernate 4.1.6 final in here. I'm going to click Save on my palm. And if I go look at my dependency hierarchy, look at all the dependencies it pulled in here. So all I have listed in mine are these three dependencies, Commons, JUnit, and Hibernate Core, but it pulled in all of these as transitive dependencies, Antler, JBoss Logging, JBoss Transaction, Dom4j, and this is particularly interesting. Notice that it had a conflict and it resolved it. So when it pulled in Hibernate Commons annotations, there was an older version there of 3.10 CR2. I'm guessing that's a release candidate. And it omit omitted that one for a conflict with Hibernate 3.1.0 GA JBoss logging. So it pulled in this JBoss logging 3.10 general, general availability and omitted that uh, release candidate too. So you can kind of see how it already chose the right version and upgraded based off of what our application needed to do. Now, there's not a scope associated with this one because we do want this available for our final packaged application, but you get to see how the transitive dependencies work and that they had their own naming convention, but they did follow the group ID of org.hibernate, which is a good thing.